Okay, folks, engine rebuild time is upon us for this 1974 MGB behind me. Yes, that's right, folks. I'm going to get stuck into rebuilding the engine, starting with assessing this vast collection of parts in the back of the camper van and trying to figure out what we have and what we need. <laughs> This is not supposed to be a will it run video. Come on, come on. Hey, it runs. If I could ever figure out what the hell is causing that problem now, I'd be doing well. Last time I came up here, it really did not want to kick off at all. Anyway, that's a whole other issue. It's a whole other issue. Let's not get bogged down in that. that nothing is ever straightforward. Actually trying to figure out how to get this engine block into the engine stand is proving to be difficult in itself. Simply because of the fact that that's the, that's the plate that goes onto it. Okay. Now these parts here are not long enough to go through uh, to, to clear the side of the flywheel. And uh, I don't also have bolts long enough to go through the plate on the back here which would mount onto the bell housing plus if I do that I'm going to need to take that plate off at some stage so I'm thinking now what I need to do is I need to take the flywheel off and obviously I am aware of the fact that the strap is actually attached to this plate so I need to lower the engine down take that plate off and then figure out a way of attaching the uh, the whole uh, engine block onto the engine stand <sighs> right okay well Fair enough, that's, that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do, so we may continue. That's a good chisel all right, that's uh, one that's, uh, one where the handle breaks away as you hit it with a hammer, that's brilliant. Like. It's not ideal having this swinging from a bloody piece of strapping when I'm working on it, but the whole idea here is that I'm putting it in the engine stand, I can't do that with these parts to it, which is somewhat frustrating, but there you have it. Now, hey, I have the right socket. What size is it? Three quarter. Okay. I'm going to get an impact gun for that, and I'm going to give, use a, a, metric, a metric socket that's a bit heavier. Hey. All right, so flywheel's off anyway, so now I need to actually put the engine down because I have to take this off and it's obviously attached to this. And um, yeah, not a, would not be a mistake you would want to make. So, I'm gonna try and peel it over so it's sitting, sitting on. The woolly hat is because I'm freezing my meds off today, in fairness. I've been out in the cold all day and uh, yeah, it's, uh, I just can't, cannot get the heat into me. I actually have a little oil field radiator on behind me here and it's providing a nice bit of heat, but it is bloody cold. So I'm not really enjoying that. Now, um, I actually consulted the manual. Uh, some of you probably think I don't actually have a manual for this car, but I do. And not only do I have a manual, I actually consulted it. And it tells you nothing about removing this plate aside from remove the bolts and take it off. So uh, that's what I will do. And now it does say that uh, the bolts are of varying sizes and um, <laughs> to make a note of where they go. So what I'll do is I'll put them back in their uh, respective holes when I take them out. So what I'll do, I'll just I'll lay them out into shape that they come off, if you know what I mean. And yeah, we'll put them back in then afterwards. 
So I think that makes sense, but if it doesn't, we can do it another way. So let's see how we get on. All those bolts look exactly the same size to me. There's a concept here where you can actually replace the, uh, you can replace say three of the five bearings in the crank, on the crankcase, sorry, on the crankshaft without taking all of this goblins apart and taking the crankshaft out. But I kind of think to myself, well, I'm going to have the engine out and I'm going to have it in the stand. So why wouldn't I take the crankshaft out and then I'll replace the seal in the process as well. So the only thing is, is that I suppose there's going to be an end float adjustment. Hey, name plug. So uh, <laughs> we, uh, we may have to look at that, but we'll see. We'll see how we progress. To be honest with you, it's a learning experience, but it's one where I'm going to be using the manual. I'm not going to be flying blind here on this one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now, so let's, let's put our bolts back in their respective holes. I just realized you saw nothing of what I did. So I took this plate here off after I took off the flywheel and yeah. So now I can put the, uh, I can put the adapter for the, the engine stand on. So those two there and then yeah, that'll work. We have to make it work anyway. All right, so I can't get the um, adapter for the bloody uh, engine. Uh, I cannot get this on uh, for the engine stand. And the reason I can't get it on is because these bits here are quite long and I don't have bolts that will go all the way through them and into them that are imperial. And so that tears the arse out of that idea. So. The only thing I can do for the moment is I'm going to keep it on the engine, the engine crane and I'm going to just put the, st the strap around these two bolts there and then on the other end tr uh, through the uh, alternator bracket and that will kind of keep it upright. Okay, so that will that'll sort that problem out. And then, so now let's, I'm going to do that and then we'll, I'll come back to you and we'll assess the rest of the stuff I have, what we have, what we need and all of that kind of stuff, okay? All right, so I don't have the engine in the stand that I bought for it, which is kind of annoying, but it's sitting on the floor. It sits all right on its oil pan, and the oil pan is going to be getting painted anyway, so it really doesn't matter for the moment. We will get around to it again, and I'll figure out a way of putting it in. I'll just have to buy some longer bolts. That will be the solution there. But uh, for the moment anyway, um, let's, uh, let's have a look and see what we've got, starting with said engine block. Okay, obviously it's been superficially cleaned, but it needs kind of deep cleaning and it needs uh, painting and um, we need to measure those bores. You can feel, well I can feel there's a ridge there, okay? So you can see the ridge, it's bad. I've run the honing stone down through the, uh, through the bores already, did that before. And to be honest with you, I think I'll probably end up li li living with it. I know it's not perfect, I mean, look, in an ideal world, I'd have taken the head off the engine and it would have been perfect inside and I would have had to do nothing with it. But, you know, these <laughs> never works out that way, you know. I mean, look at the rest of the car. So, yeah, um, the other thing as well then is I'm going to strip off the rest of the bits. I have a new water pump for it. Um, I have a new timing chain and tensioner for it. Um, I'm going to have to get a crankshaft, pulley, or crankshaft seal. Um, I have new engine mounts. I have all new gaskets and seals and I have a um, yeah and then obviously a head gasket as well. Looking at the cylinder head um, this needs nothing doing to it anymore other than removing the uh, surface corrosion from the, fa the mating face and giving it a paint because it obviously hasn't been painted but it has been completely reworked so by reworked I mean it's had new hardened valve seats put in, new new valve guides, and it's basically good to go. Now, um, I have a new uh, I have a new thermostat and housing for it. The rocker shaft is I have a new rocker shaft to go on it, and new bushings to go into the rockers, and they will be getting fitted over the next while. I still haven't collected them yet, so hopefully that'll be getting done soon. So uh, that that basically takes care of the head. So again, cleaning and painting. That's all that needs to be done there, really. And then we come on to 
this heap of delights over here. Now there are a mix of new and used, serviceable and unserviceable parts in here. Radiator fan needs to be cleaned. Rocker cover needs to be cleaned. Push rods, uh, they uh, need to be cleaned and um, checked for straightness. And I need a new uh, oil filler cap, I'd say, as well. Um, a few miscellaneous pipes. There are the painted up um, air filters, uh, air filter covers, uh, but they will need to be, uh, I need to get stickers for them. There is my oil cooler over there, and uh, I need to flush that out and give it a clean as well. New air filters. Um, fuel hoses. Heat deflector for the carburetors. More parts for the air filters. Get them out of my way. And I'll come back to them in a minute. More parts for the air filters, uh, air filter housings. Uh, intake manifold needs a clean. Um, it's uh, I made a start on it, but I didn't finish it, so that needs to be done. There's a new uh, alternator belt for it. There are the pistons which have been cleaned and are ready to. Uh, maybe it's ready to go. To be honest with you. They're in good shape, actually. Um, they uh, there was some baked on carbon inside the ring grooves, but they are uh, they're uh, they're pretty good. What's concerning me now is the fact that there's <laughs> the uh, piston is not pivoting on the rocker shaft or on the, the the wrist pin. I may have a look at that and see. I'm worried about that now. All right. Oh no. What the hell has happened there, folks? They were... They were sprayed with oil and everything. So they should definitely not be seized up like that. Oh. Problems, problems, problems. I mean, look, they're spotless. I'll get a rubber ha I'll get a rubber mallet and I'll just tap it and see if it frees up. Either way, then I'm going to have to knock out that wrist pin and actually have a look and see what um, what's going on inside there. That's a worrying situation now. Um, I have been soaking in some uh, uh, penetrating oil there. Uh, GT85 is the stuff I'm using there. So uh, uh, I'll come back to it another time. Anyway, right. So there is our two carburetors which have been freshly overhauled water pump housing there's a clutch in there with the release bearing and uh, pressure plate carb linkages i need to clean that up as well that's a breather for the side of the engine block the distributor has been uh, cleaned out and everything as well and it's all uh, nice and working and free and everything there more than i could say for the poxy pistons but anyway uh and then Various different little spares and stuff like that in this box. Um, you know, things like the oil dipstick, a few bits and pieces I may revisit at some point and stuff I may need in the future. But uh, yeah, I mean, and then over here, let's see what else we have. Uh, the water pump is in here. There's uh, main bearings, piston rings, the water pump, the uh, thermostat, uh, the, the, uh, the water um, valve for the heaters. Uh, timing chain and tensioner um, thermostat that's all in there as well so that's that's all grand oh yeah and the uh, all her near her and the star her more are both uh, awaiting uh, some attention as well I mean there's the kind of guns was built up all over the engine like it, that was on everything you know so you can see the job I had cleaning everything yeah, there's a new uh, uh, what do you call it uh, oil filter in there Oh, uh, there is the uh, new um, distributor cap and leads uh, that uh, when we got the engine running initially, I put them on it then. Uh, into, uh, exhaust manifold is obviously going to need some attention too, so I might see if I can get that blasted or something like that because it looks gash at the moment. I suppose the first thing to do is to look at the pistons really, isn't it? I mean, in fairness, uh, I like beyond cleaning and painting everything and all that kind of stuff, I need to sort them out because <laughs> if we don't have pistons, we can't go anywhere.
This is not the type of thing you want to see when it comes to doing a job. Specialist tools. That is really annoying. So press fit gudgeon pins. So um, gudgeon pins of this type are an interference fit and special tool number blah and adapter blah must be used. Maybe possible to borrow this tool and adapter from your local Leyland agent or engineering firm. <laughs> Wishful thinking if ever there was. Allow me to just say at this juncture, bollocks anyway. Uh, the Haynes manual there talks about what you do if you have uh, tight um, gudgeon pins in the early type ones is the, that you basically immerse the piston in boiling water and uh, the expansion of the aluminium of the piston will allow for removal but uh, I, I need to I need to understand this better. I like my understanding was that the piston, the gudgeon pin shouldn't move in, it shouldn't move in respect to the uh, so, my understanding is that the gudgeon pin shouldn't move relative to the piston, it should move relative to the conrod. So the fact that there's a couple of these that are moving, but the, the gudgeon pin is actually uh, stuck on the... Uh, it, the gudgeon pin is turning inside the piston. Now I would have thought that the gudgeon pin should stay still and the, the bearing inside the small end of the conrod should turn on the gudgeon pin. But, you know, look, there's so many things that are done differently in this engine that already that I need to try and figure these things out. Okay, so after a bit of Googling, um, it turns out that yes, the uh, wrist pin or gudgeon pin or whatever you want to call it does pivot inside the piston rather than in the rod. And that's just not the way I've seen it been done before. Normally, there's a bearing at the top of the rod, the small end bearings, and the wrist pin stays put inside the piston and actually uh, rotates freely inside the rod. But MG decided to do it differently. Or Look, what's the worst that's going to happen, folks, here? I'm in deep shit one way or another. <coughs> Start to free up a little bit there, anyway. One of them is fine, one's questionable, and two are seized. <laughs> See, that one there is fine. I'm still going to lubricate it though, all the same. Like, I sprayed these with WD 40 to stop any corrosion. A lot of good that did. All right, that was not too bad either. I'll be getting assembly lube and all that sort of stuff when when I'm kitting out and I want to get some black enamel paint and stuff like that for uh, yeah, that's coming good now, isn't it? get some black enamel paint for painting all the parts as well like engine enamel okay that's nice there now that one's that one's free okay so two of them are good okay so it's uh, day one of the project uh, the engine build project and I've already made shit of my garage so <laughs> we're off to a good start and the uh, uh, pistons, uh, the wrist pins are seized in the pistons, so we need to fix that as well. But these are problems that we are going to overcome. Now, I have to say uh, um, that I know on the last video about the MG, I went on a bit of a mad one because I just got fed up doing the body work, to be honest with you. It just really was not my thing at the time. I will come back to it though, so do, don't uh, don't worry, folks. I've you know I've been mulling it over. I will come back to it, and I'll start by when I get back to it. I'll start by getting into some of the simpler bits. I've been watching a lot of uh, your man Fitzy's fabrications. I know a lot of you have recommended him. He is very good. And by the way, he's not Irish. He's Canadian, so far as I can tell. He's got a peculiar accent, but seems like a, seems like a good bloke, and I'm really enjoying his videos. So uh, hopefully, I can learn a bit of him. So uh, yeah, you know, I mean, look at it's it's a learning curve. I'm just. Uh, the average bloke at home in his garage 
doing what he can. So you know, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not pur- purporting to be professional in this, but you know what the 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 engine build I think is going to be um it's going to be quite a enjoyable quite an enjoyable process and um yeah you know look we'll we'll have a few uh, hurdles to overcome hurdle number one already on the be- on the bench here behind me. But we will, uh, we will get past that. If I have to get new uh, pistons and rods and everything like that, what I'll probably end up doing then is if I have to, do, if I have to get new pistons and rods, I will get oversized pistons and I will um, bore out the block. But I want to have to do that, you know. I just I can't really afford it to be honest with you, you know. Um, and I kind of want to work with what I have at this stage, you know. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of parts going into this engine. But uh, yeah, look, I'm kind of waffling now. So um, yeah, at least uh, at least you can kind of see where we're at now, and uh, we can kind of um, go from this point. And uh, as I said, next uh, next step will be kind of uh, cleaning and painting uh, various engine components, getting them ready, laying all the stuff out properly, and um, you know, just what I'll do then is I'll I'll, I'll get uh, try and figure out how to get that bloody engine into the, <laughs> the engine block into the engine stand that I bought for it and uh, we can take out the crankshaft and have a look at the bearings and everything like that so that'll be uh, that'll be something nice anyway and I'll have to get a few seals and stuff I'll have to get new crankshaft seals and that kind of thing so anyway folks listen thanks for watching and I will uh, I'll keep you updated with my progress and uh, please do click subscribe if you haven't already and uh, if you click the little bell notification the bell button beside the subscribe button that will uh, notify you when new videos are up and uh, it means that you won't miss out on any of my progress I'm going to try and have a video out every Friday uh, half eight in the morning Irish time so um, yeah we'll uh, you know, I mean, at least hopefully there should be something out. If, if it's not an MG video, it means that I haven't had the chance to do anything on the MG, but like literally today is Wednesday. So that kind of gives you an idea as to where I am in the week, you know. But listen, folks, I'll, I'll stop waffling and I'll chat to you soon. Thanks very much for joining me.